Tom Skilling joins WGN, becomes a member of the News 9 team. And Tom, I hope you're as happy about it as we are. Jack, it's indeed a pleasure to work with such a group of professionals here at WGN and in one of the most exciting weather markets probably in the whole United States. We've had our share of unusual weather not only here in the United States... From the 9 o'clock news... We'll see you tonight on the 9 o'clock news. There are never any hurricanes in Chicago. Cookie. Freeze bright, you're out at... To the seventh inning stretch. Hey, ho! <laughs> All right, man. It helps if he knows your voice. <laughs> yeah. And from dog sledding, we're in the heart of tornado season right now, to storm chasing. Oh my God, there it is. Wow. We're being chased by a multiple vortex tornado. It's 10 below, which is... Tom Skilling has seemingly seen it all. At ground zero for today's uh, solar eclipse. He is a cultural touchstone. Here on top of the Sears Tower, the days are actually a little bit longer. A Chicago treasure. We've got a meteorologist in training. You are, boy, you are something else. Tom freaking Skilling. I could have you killed if I wanted to. And the nation's foremost forecaster. Nothing to cut the wind. It can roar. But how is he so good at what he does? Did I call it or what? Look at those riptides. Gorgeous. Skilling. Sorry. Here you go. Pretty good amounts of snow down. We observed the master meteorologist at work. Start about eight in the morning. Over three days as he tracked a storm headed for Chicago. We've got an inversion layer right now. And what happens is you get this shallow little layer of cool air over the lake. And when it moves inland, it cuts down on the mixing of the atmosphere. And so. It's a 40 degree day in Chicago and Lake Michigan is stirring ahead of a predicted snowstorm. But in a north side high rise, one man casts a long shadow. You know, looking out here. Over the city's weather forecast. It's like different every day, the phase of the lake and. And he isn't so sure we'll see snow. It's a fascinating place to watch the waves. Tom Skilling's home office is a fascinating place to watch the weather. But I start about eight in the morning but it's even more fascinating to watch the weather man. This is where I spend uh, probably about eight, 10 hours a day in front of computers and all. These weather forecasts don't drop out of the sky. You know, they take a little bit of preparation. Here's the weather system that'll be ours uh, on Friday. Here's another GOES-18 as the Western satellite. So we can put this up, but there's our storm right there. This is literally within the last 20 minutes. We can then switch over to the Japanese satellite and look all the way over to Asia. Look at this. He's running complex atmospheric science experiments. You take the temperature of the cloud, you can figure out what altitude it's at, and you use that as a proxy for the wind there. He's also extracting data from more than 20 weather service models from around the globe. It's going to move across the Rockies. It'll move out in the plains. There'll be a tornado outbreak down in the southern plains, and then it heads up towards Chicago. Now this particular depiction shows quite a snowstorm laying out for us. The models though show a concerning disparity. They range from zero to as much as 14 inches. Using his own color-coded system, he's charting the numbers. Each line here is a different computer model solution on what the temperatures may be in Chicago. Chances for measurable precipitation go up to 86% a couple days from now. In meteorology, the method is known as ensembling, a melding of instruments like a musical symphony. Skilling is the conductor, but his baton is a calculator. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. He works the buttons without blinking. And by 3.30 in the afternoon, he's worked almost a full day before he leaves for the office. I generally I'm done with my research work at home by about 3 to 3.30, and I then get in the car and drive across town to the station. I like to be in there by 4 o'clock. Basically, when I get in, it's a matter of uh, preparing the graphics that I show uh, on television. I'm waiting for the era where they perfect transporter technology like we see on Star Trek and therefore I'll just get in my little unit at home and transport myself to the station and avoid all this, this traffic.
The next day, as Tom is driving to WGN, prepping some graphics for uh, our newscast tonight. There's a certain basket of graphics that we use on a regular basis. Longtime producer Bill Snyder, the Scotty Pippen to Skilling's Michael Jordan, is in the weather center on the phone discussing the storm with the news team. You know, some parts of our area have no impacts at all, you know? Right. It makes it, it, makes it a very tr tricky forecast. But the two have been working out tricky forecasts for decades, since the days before the internet. When weather models would be printed on hundreds of sheets of paper from a die fax machine, and then analyzed by hand. Soon, Skilling arrives. A makeup artist is ready and waiting to color Skilling's forehead. He, of course, has spent hours on a color-coded forecast. This is where all the early work comes home to roost. I am re-navigating the radar, telling the computer what I want it to zoom in on, and by re-navigating it, I mean I'm centering on, on the area of attention. Boom, I've got the satellite in there. There's an old saying in Chicago, if you don't like the weather, wait 10 minutes. Weather always changes. From the time you walk in here, it's one deadline after another one. I'll tell you, it... Uh, the deadline never does. That's the nature of the business. With the storm bearing down, Skilling is scheduled to lead the newscast. It's 15 minutes to his first deadline. Every second counts. And we've got to hit at the top of the show uh, because of the uh, storm we've got uh, coming in. How much time do we have here, Bill? We are about eight minutes or so, eight, nine minutes away. Okay. Do we have GFS Ensemble? Let's try that one. That looks a little better. And let's try the uh, numbers. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. How much time, Bill? Uh, we're getting close here, about four minutes. Oh, boy. The clock is moving fast. The computer is moving slow. This doesn't look right. What is wrong with this? Let's go. What is the uh, traffic flow here, Bill? Uh, headlines are off the top and then straight to you. Yike, yike. Why is this uh, not doing this right? It's 4.56, closing in on showtime. About two minutes or less. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. With seconds to spare, the final graphics are ready. Uh, and I need the right clicker. Let's see, this is the one. And skilling is ready too. Bill, how's that look? I didn't even look at this thing. As the storm you see revs up and moves up in our direction. Here's what it looks like on the satellite tonight. It's ingesting warm, humid air off the ground. By Friday, the snowstorm looks like it will just miss Chicago. Truck 59 is back in our selfishness. In the WGN newsroom, executive producer Sam Julian is planning the evening newscasts after talking with Skilling. We'll plan on leading with weather in all three hours. It doesn't sound like we're going to need extra hits, though, at the halves. Since the storm system is kind of further away than what we originally thought, I think we should go to Northwest Indiana. Field crews are being sent to the area likely to be impacted. Change of story, Andrea Medina will now meet you out front. You will be heading to the south suburbs with the winter storm that will be approaching. In the Weather Center. What's important to people today and how do I want to communicate that? Skilling is putting the finishing touches on the five o'clock forecast. You know, as I sit and look at all these maps and all these numbers and all, the thing that always runs through my mind is, this is all set, Bill? And pictures. If there's a big weather change that I know is going to slap people in the face, all right. I want to try and give them a heads up that this is going to happen. Your piece on. There we go, Kevin. All right. Then it's off to the studio. Ooh, doggy. What do you see some of the pictures? These are just some preliminary shots that have come in. This is from Issam B over in Lowell, Indiana, near whiteout conditions uh, there. Where he'll seamlessly step from the anchor desk. Wet snow uh, flakes tend to stick together and so you can get those big half To the green screen. Snowflakes and add a 40 to 50 mile an hour wind with it. Paducah had 56 mile an hour winds and look at the rains downstate. The jet stream's strongest winds shoot into a system right there and they spin the thunderstorms. Tomorrow night, partly cloudy, chilly, low down to 29. At 521, he's done. 
at least until the next deadline. Bill, we did it. I'll tell you, thank you, sir. <laughs> a lot of balls in the air on a night like this. I'll tell you that, you feel like a juggler. You've got data coming in, you've got half your viewing area getting one kind of weather and the other half getting an entirely different weather. For nearly 45 of WGN's 75 years, Tom Skilling has been the man watching the weather. He's achieved a status few in Chicago TV ever have. He is both beloved and believed. I think the weather person occupies a very special place in the broadcast schedule because we are talking about a subject that universally affects everybody. Weather is the one subject that affects every person across races or religions, genders or jobs. We connect to him. Well, I expected a little bit more snow, but today was perfect. It wasn't too bad. Because weather connects us all. How many conversations start with, you know, a throwaway phrase on the weather? Boy, it was warm today. And then that starts the communication going between people. Uh, what did Mark Twain said? He said, everybody talks about the weather, but nobody does anything about it. Something to that effect. Wow. Oh, we love him so you know, much. And a lot of people marvel like, wow, mm -hmm. seven, a seven-minute forecast that That's he right. will do on a daily basis. <laughs> now you think, wow, wonder how he gets it all in there. We should He's give him 15 minutes. He's been working since like 5 a.m., right? <laughs> yeah. He's great. Yeah. All right. Well, next week on WJN at 75, Mike will take us back to the 1990s and show us how WGN Sports made Bulls broadcast special during the incredible run of the Michael Jordan dynasty. It's going to be another good one. And we've got special coverage every Thursday night through April here on the News at 9. We also have a special section of our website that's devoted to the stories on the anniversary. You can read that at WGNTV.com slash 75.